thinkers, we're here live fresh in the morning with a brand new video where independent thinking is as simple as breathing. Now, today we're going to talk about mental health. Mental health has been a big theme this year from the NBA even with uh, Kevin Love, DeMar DeRozan discussing their mental health issues to Kanye West and even Kid Cudi having their mental health issues and just uh, releasing an album. And with the suicides of uh, Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain, this, this mental health thing, it seems to be a, a very real big issue. And with that, we're gonna talk about the seeking for approval, seeking for validation, and how that can basically lead to mental health issues, lead to uh, suicide, different things like that. So with validation, and we're gonna, specific, we're gonna specifically talk about the black community. And um, I witnessed something very, very disturbing this weekend. And to me, it was a microcosm of how the black community in general um, operates. I hope you can hear me, it's very, very windy. Now, as we posted on our Facebook page, make sure you're on our Facebook page as well, Melanated Media News Facebook because we post a lot of articles. I write some articles on the um, medium.com and I'll share them on Facebook. So there's a lot of content that you might not see that's on the uh, Facebook. Of Facebook, uh, the CDC just put out a new study where basically the suicide rate has went up, I think 40, 50% in the last 30 years. And with that need for validation, in social media, I think there's a correlation between people seeking validation and people, uh, mental health issues, the rise in suicide rates, people using Facebook Live and other social media forms to broadcast their suicide. Like I said, I said in a video a while back that Facebook Live was the new suicide letter. Instead of a suicide letter, people were committing suicide and maybe explaining why. Um, before they, you know, committed suicide. So, with that being said, to me, yes, people need, on a certain level, some kind of validation, some kind of um, companionship amongst people. I don't think people can, people are not really made to live in complete, utter isolation. There has to be some sort of community within the people. But with that being said, the validation is coming from the wrong place. And I think the validation is misguided. And I saw something very, very disturbing this um, weekend where, and to, like I said, to me, this was a microcosm of how the black community operates in general. And basically what happened was you had a uh, quote unquote homeless person um, in front of a store asking for money. Well, they were kind of just sitting there, but you could, people could look at the person and tell they were homeless. And what I observed in about 10 minutes is that only Caucasians or white people gave this person money. It doesn't matter, it didn't matter their age, it didn't matter their gender or anything. It was a young white male gave them money, a older or middle-aged white woman gave them money. And all of the black people just walked past them and just just kept walking. And to me, that's, that's very, very disturbing. We're materialistic. We want to, and our associations, our associations are materialistic. We're materialistic with um, how we want to associate with others. It's not just, well, we want to flash money, we want to, you know, push materialism in music and this and that. No, people associate with those who are materialistic. People associate with those who um, basically have the, what you would call white supremacy's version of success. And th this is why we love our supporters, no matter how many it is, this is why we love the free thinkers on this channel, because you didn't wait until I, had to become verified. You didn't wait until I had to get a million views. You didn't wait until someone gave me this cosign or someone 
uh, gave me this or said this about, you know, the channel or whatever. You, you use your own independent thinking. That's why we say independent thinkers only. We don't want people... I mean, we, if you want to watch the channel, that's fine. We hope you appreciate the content. But we don't want people who only want to support this channel when it gets big or when it does, it starts doing numbers. We want people who are aware, cognizant, and aware of this is different, this is good content. I don't care who watches it. I know that I like it. You don't have to like something because 50 or 60 people liked it. You like it because you like it. It's, it's all about being genuine. We try to be, I try to be genuine with this channel. I try to be tr transparent. And, um, you know, that's what it's all about. It's not about just associating with people because, quote unquote, they may have made it. Because generally, nine times out of 10, the people who haven't made it, the reason they haven't made it is not because of talent. And what is making it anyway? You know what I mean? There's a lot of independent artists, a lot of independent um, rap artists who you probably never heard of, who probably would never go platinum or anything that have solid cult-like followings and fan bases. So it's not about making it. And to me, that is a um, very big component in suicide is when people feel like they haven't made it when people feel like they they just don't know what to do they're, they're unsure of themselves we know who we are over here we, we understand uh, the purpose of the content that we put out that insecurity when you need validation you know like they say content is king and whatever you're doing, if you're a free thinker, if you, even if you're not a free thinker and you're watching this channel, don't doubt yourself. So people will tell you, some people may say, well, you know, your ability to be a free thinker is a, your natural born right. So if something isn't working out like you want or whatever, and you're unsure about it, just you know, if it's in your heart to do it, just do it. Don't let people persuade you. If you don't get any support or the support that you want, just do it anyway, because nine times out of 10, the support probably won't even be genuine anyway. You know what I mean? So there's all kind of fake support. And then there's support, the support you get from the people, they just want validation or they're just clout chasing. And I think if you come to that realization early, that helps with a lot of um, mental health issues. Because even from my experience, a lot of people that suffer from mental health issues and mental illnesses, they're generally honest people. And I think at times they can't really, they can't really fathom how fake this world is to a certain extent. They can't really fathom how fake people are, how you know what I mean? The fake, the support is, and how people would just really don't care about you. And that's just the world we live in. And a lot of that has to do with our culture. I don't think America, I think America is kind of in their own lane as far as that is concerned. And a lot of that has to do with um, capitalism and individuality and different things like that. So, it's a beautiful day, it's sunny. You know, we're in good spirits over here, and we understand, you know, if you're dealing with mental illnesses, mental issues, um, it's okay. Just some sort of validation may be okay, but don't just do everything. Your life should not revolve around people's validation. I think a lot of this has to do with um, our culture as black people. I think as a community, as a generalization I think we suffer from a mental illness not just a um, not just from an individual aspect but from a cultural and a as a whole I think if you if you were to generalize a major components major characteristics of the black community I think even a neutropathic um, psychiatrists would 
diagnosis. Number one, a lot of our culture does not exist outside of white supremacy. So when you look at rap music, it was birthed, like Chuck D said, the CNN of the hood, the CNN of the ghetto. Like they want, we're basically reporting what is going on and what is happening to us, basically as a reaction. It's a lot, I mean, yes, it's therapeutic, but it's more reactionary to a certain extent. And it is inspiring also. But my point is we're reporting what's being done to us. Uh, even the food that we grew up on, the soul food, the slave food, a lot of that is from slavery. And, you know, the Harlem Renaissance, you can kind of maybe make an argument that that was a little bit more organic, but that's kind of obsolete. Uh, Harlem is being gentrified. A lot of people, I'm, I'm pretty sure maybe people in Harlem might not be aware of the Harlem Renaissance. So, and then with uh, gentrification, it's just destroying black and brown cultures worldwide. And, um, you know, a lot of our culture, I don't think it feels like it exists outside of white supremacy. And if you feel like it does, if you could name me certain instances, that would be great. Even uh, jumping over the broom, getting married, that was from slavery. So I feel like when there's so much of our culture that was birth during slavery and if so much of it is attached to slavery times during that era and the fact that white supremacy still exists today I think a lot of things like we where is the code for us protecting ourselves why don't we follow that code but we are grew up eating the same thing we all grew up listening to rap music or you know what i mean our parents our ancestors from the south maybe had certain codes and different things like that but most of that is probably gone now so my point is when you look at our culture a lot of things that we do we don't protect our communities like we should a lot of things that we do are detrimental um to our culture are detrimental to our community. Like I was saying with the validation, we seek validation from, oh, I've made it, or oh, I'm going to help this person that's on the way, or I'm going to do this for this person. You know what I mean? Like, it's not rooted in, this is what's best for our culture. This is what's best for our community. You don't really hear that. It's about well, this person can do this for me. So that's not Afrocentric at all. That's not Afrocentric at all. That's not Pan-Africanism. That's not black culture. Even if you want to exclude anything outside of America, that's not black culture. It shouldn't be black culture. When you interact with people online, rather than the people in your community, like that social media is a safety net. Like, oh, I can associate with people that think like me, but if you don't think like me, and that, that's a lot of, that just creates further and further more division. It's like social media doesn't really open up the discussion like you think. If you're a free thinker, it does, but most people aren't. It creates a division between left and right, black Democrats, atheists, religious people, uh, people who are only in it for themselves. Like, it just creates more of the same, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And it's, um, it's social media, social media is like a safety net for the path of least resistance. And it's a safety net for people's egos. It's a safety net for confirmation bias. You you want you don't want to try to really make an impact or reach people that may be difficult to reach. You want to reach people that already think like you, which is in a way not bad, but you know it 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 creates an environment where it creates an environment where it's more and more difficult to convert people or provert people. 
So again, we're gonna close this video out by basically saying, you know, validation. We use that word loosely. We use validation like, well, validation from who? Validation from, you know, so we won't get anywhere in society if we keep just supporting everyone that thinks like us. And that is a major problem in the black community. The moment a person disagrees with something someone does, it becomes personal or they don't want to support you anymore despite what someone may be doing. You can look at Malcolm X, whoever it was, whether it's someone personal, whether it's someone famous, it's always the case. And that's when you don't really have a code or a culture, these kinds of things happen. And it's very, very um, detrimental because if nobody's the same, nobody's gonna agree with everything that someone does. And that, that is really part of being, what being a free thinker, a free independent thinker is, is that you understand that people will disagree with you. You understand that we're different. You understand we all have differences of opinion, but I think the main thing is what are the commonalities? Do the commonalities outweigh the differences? And when you're under white supremacy, that is the one commonality. Is it not? So my thing is, and that might seem all over the place, but there's different levels of validation is what I'm saying. There's validation from your own people. There's validation from people who support your cause that might not look like you. There's validation from people who just, who genuinely support you. There's validation from people who do the same thing that you do, but might not look like you, or they might look like you. There's, so there's many different levels. There's also validation with being content with where you are in your life and making a genuine impact and being honest with yourself. And I think that's where a lot of, I think the key root of maybe mental illness, illnesses, I mean, I'm not a licensed anything, but it's all about honesty and being honest with yourself. Or if you're being honest with yourself and you accept it, um, no matter how harsh or how hard things may be, I think that, you know, when you, that, you have to accept, be, you have to have acceptance. You have to have acceptance within yourself first. And you have to understand this is just how the world is. You know what I mean? It's a lot faker than it used to be. And that's okay. Because you, it has to be okay because what can you really do about it? Unless you create your own currency that creates a genuine society rather than a uh, society for profit, there's nothing you can do about it. So um, you just have to realize that. And, you know, Anthony Bourdain's, his suicide, it was definitely, I don't think anyone's seen it coming, but you generally don't. And, you know, I believe you know, when you commit things like that, you're going to come back. You know, this is just a big, serious video game, this life. And when you, you know, it's just a test. And when you fail the test, when you quit the test, you have to take the test over. And it might be a lot harder. You might be deducted 10 points. You know, that could be your karma or whatever. But not to get you know, too much into the spiritual aspect of it. That's just my opinion. But basically, uh, mental illness and social media and the need for validation, and it's increasing. Also, suicide rates have basically surpassed the homicide rate. So we're at the point where we're killing ourselves more than we're killing other people. Some people might look at that and say, well, that's weak. Um, you know, it's, it, they might look at it and say it's weak that you take your life. Or they might say that it's weak that you can't take someone else's life. Uh, why don't you take it out on the people who, 
deserve it or take it out on the people who you feel wrong to why would you take your life so it's a lot of layers to that but I think to me that's almost the most alarming part is that we are willing to kill ourselves we're willing to harm ourselves before we harm other people and you could say there's some maybe there's some sort of empathy with that the gap between the rich and the poor is getting wider and wider. People don't feel that they're making an impact. People don't feel that they're, I guess that they get getting the validation that they're looking for. And, you know, it's not that serious, to be honest. It's not, it's really not that serious. You know what I mean? I know that's easier said than done, but you just have to really come to terms with that. You know what I mean? You have to really, like that person I shot up the YouTube stuff. We know the YouTube algorithm is not perfect and a lot of us put our heart and souls into creating content for people and it might not get the recognition it deserves. That's just the way things are. I'm sure there's a thousand stories of during the civil rights movement that we've probably never heard of. A thousand successful stories. So I think when we become attached to, to the results, that's when a lot of the problems come in. Being attached to the end game, being attached to the results, the numbers, the analytics, the money, the profits, the hard-nosed data, all of that stuff. That's when it becomes a problem. Do you agree with the detrimental aspects of black culture and how maybe black culture is a mental illness maybe it's a byproduct and a product cycle within itself within itself that creates mental illnesses because when we're living in these conditions and the post-traumatic stress disorder and parents being on drugs and seeing violence and then you have white supremacy there's so many different aspects of you know what I mean? There's a lot of stuff people see and personally that they see uh, in the war that pales in comparison. Like Chicago, they named it. The reason they named it Chirac was because more people died in Chicago than in the war. And these soldiers, you know, the, remember when the soldiers were killing themselves and coming home? Uh, so what do you think? You know, if more people are dying in Chicago, what do you think is going to happen there? You know, I'm just saying they might not commit suicide, but those psychological uh, illnesses and tendencies are probably still there. And I think the music and the culture and our ego is a front to a lot of people that the glamour of making something look bad. Like they say about the N-word, well, it used to be bad, we turned it into something good. And I think, you know, that's a double-edged sword where we, you know, something that is bad, we make it, we turn it into good, but it's really not solution-based. It's really not long-term. It's it really, it might not benefit the whole. It might not, it may only benefit a um, certain number of people. So. To me, that's, um, that's another aspect as well. And I think that's a big component of our culture as a black society where we, oh, we just laugh it off. Or, man, he died. That's crazy. Man, that's it. Or, oh, well, you know what I mean? Like, there's the, the lack of empathy is really alarming. The lack of, because it's like the people... And this can be another topic, but it's like the people who you would think are the most cold-hearted, like sometimes, the, not sometimes, but often I find the very, the people that you would deem are thugs, low-lives, criminals, scavengers, these people at least oftentimes have principles. And sometimes, often, you find that the average parent, nine to five, quote unquote, nice seemingly person, are the most unempathetic, 
ruthless, opportunistic people in the world because their principle is profit. Their principle is validation from white society or validation from the negative aspects of black culture. And I find that very interesting as well is that you can't really judge a book by its cover for sure. That's my thoughts. Do you like this setting? If you want me to keep doing videos out here, if you stay to the end of this video, you're definitely a free thinker. We appreciate your time and concerns. Make sure you check out the Facebook page. There's a lot of different material there, like I said in the beginning of the video.